black woman, a black woman. So special. It's hard being a black woman. Always last on the list, always first to be overlooked, always last to be picked. Always bending over backwards for my ass to be kicked. Unappreciated, yet I made a way for your ass to hit. It's hard being a black woman, so sometimes, yeah, I'm pissed. I gotta take the role of two parents and still be the play with. So okay. my trauma or complex around colorism did not come from my peers or, or um, you know, school. It right. came from television and right. the media and videos and, and me wanting to look like these beautiful women that I felt that I see were TV worthy and noticing my skin complexion doesn't look like hers. My, my hair coils aren't as loose as hers. You know, right. My lips are not as thin as hers. Right. So that's where my complex came from as a younger child. But as I grew up and I became more educated, more wise, um, I absolutely love everything about like my skin complexion. But mm -hmm. um, colorism does exist. Black women, dark of darker shades, are treated differently. Why is that? I feel one because of colorism and just European beauty standards, right? The lighter you are, the more closer you are to purity or beauty, and right. the European standards. And the darker you are, the more you are closer to being bad or mm -hmm. masculine. Like right. a, a lot of women who are darker, I'm dark, right. um, are viewed as just being more masculine, not as feminine, not as soft, not as so sultry or sensual. And right. Which is so untrue. Okay. It's so untrue. And um, Tupac said it the best, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And if okay. you know anything about history and culture and mm -hmm. melanin right. and how um, important melanin is and how expensive it is, you would wish that you was as dark as the pavement. So, you know? so when you see like the white chicks trying to like emulate black women, mm -hmm. with the hair, mm -hmm. the, um, the 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 booty and enhancements, mm -hmm. how you feel about that? I I feel they are. I mean, the best. Flattery is imitation, right? They're trying to imitate and get what we have naturally. Right. Um, so they obviously are in lust over it or um, they want, they envy it. They want these features and these attributes. Right. Um, so, but I can't say that without speaking from the other side of the, the other end of the spectrum with black women and our infatuation with having straight hair, European hair, in this Indian luxury hair. You know, that's not typically how our hair is grown out of our scalp. So if mm -hmm. I want to speak about white women emulating black hairstyles, we have to also talk about black women with the wigs and the right. lace fronts. As an African American woman growing up in the South Bronx, mm -hmm. it was very hard for me. Every time I went into the store, Papi used to speak Spanish to me before he spoke English to me, mm. not knowing where I was from. Okay. But God, you ever like... Have, have I been harassed? Harassed. For how light I am? Yeah. Yes. Have I been mistaken for Spanish or another ethnicity? Absolutely. Hmm. So black queens are just beautiful in all complexions, you're trying to say? Black queen. First of all, women of all structures, shapes, and sizes. Okay. But when it comes down to the black queen, yes, we are first. We are in demand. We know what we want. We are who we are. So how about growing up in school? Like, how did you have It was school? horrible. Why? From, from kindergarten up until I got into high school. It was that light-skinned girl, do you know her? That light-skinned girl, I don't want to know her. To be honest, growing yeah. up, I thought white people were superior. Okay. I looked at TV and all I saw was white. I thought white was right. You right. know, uh, they had better jobs, more education. I grew up in the projects. Right. So um, my self-image was torn. You know, I always thought I was lower than, than them until I started um, looking up, doing my research and doing my black history. We are not angry, we are traumatized. They stigmatize black women specifically because, or just black people specifically, because we have another level of anger when we, or, or I guess you could say, um, just like dysfunction and toxicity right. when it comes to our behavior that is stemmed directly from generational trauma and 
slavery. Okay. Um, and this is why it's so important to heal. When you heal, you're healing your ancestors. You're okay. healing your mother, your grandmother, the bad parenting, the yelling, the the capital disciplining, the you know, capital punishment for right. your children, um, talking down to them, all of this stuff, right? This is all stems from trauma. This is why we grow up so angry. Right. We wasn't loved properly as a child. We were nurtured properly. Or um, we were envious of, of other people that had their families together, that had both parents in the home. Right. So we, we hoarder all these emotions, these negative energies, and we grow up and the smallest thing ticks us off. You know? Right. And that's where our anger comes from but as a people we are not an angry people we are not a violent people we are not um hostile people okay we're not absolutely not we are queens mm -hmm. we have a lot on our plates we don't belittle people we do stress a lot just because we want our voices to be heard black woman has took this country this nation so far and i'm not talking celebrities and Beyonce, and I'm talking just black women in itself. We've been having babies without medicine. We've been given drugs and, and healed our men, our children, took care of homes. First of all, our first place on this earth is nurture. Mm. No one knows how to be a nurturer more than a woman. Right. A black woman right. at that. So okay. no, I don't think that we're bitter. I think, do we belittle ourselves or do we feel like it's not enough or we want more? Absolutely. Okay. I'm a black woman. Yeah. I was angry for a long time. Why were you angry though? Life or just like certain situations? My identity was stolen. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, I, I come into a place where my father wasn't even there for me. So right. I felt abandoned from a child automatically. I'm growing up in a project, so I'm always thinking white is right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, low self-esteem. It goes back to trauma and low self-esteem, man. Yeah. You know? They have the right to be angry. Why? Because the economic injustice mm -hmm. is normal for them to be, to be angry because they never have the opportunity. You see, uh, 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 when you compare them with the other classes. Okay. It's normal. Because I don't know, I don't know why they, they, they say what black women are always angry. But I don't think they... they it's, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It, it depends on where, where you find this black woman. If you come to the ghetto yeah. and you find a black woman that has been rejected by all form of social structures, they don't want to help her and she didn't have a way to go to school. Her life is jogging the street and having what they call delinquents, vagabonds, and going upside down and had two babies, one sucking, each one sucking one side of the breast, the breast becomes sloppy and dropping milk. What type of behavior do you expect from that person? Mm -hmm. Then we can destroy that. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, amongst the black community, if you try to share our wealth, yeah. then we will not have those black women with anger. And we have to say, we have to create a parallel. If we see black woman with a lot of anger, we have to see also black man with, a, let's say, with a percentage of 74% 70, of black man suffer high blood pressure. Mm. You got Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. you know, which is actually like my role model. Um, oh yeah, I love how she has to be my favorite woman in history. Okay, because just thinking about what it is that she accomplished. You know, going back and forth through the Underground Railroad, I believe it was approximately like don't don't quote me, but like seven to eight years or something like okay. that. Okay, and she saved um, hundreds of slaves. But the process of having to go through that and the process of like not every slave wanting to be saved at the end of the day we're living in white america right we were here so they could capitalize off of us we came here our ancestors came here as slaves to work and help build america right period that's what we came here for that was our sole purpose to come here and, and work build but we get no credit we get no respect and i don't think we ever will mm. i hear that shit. you know you talk about, you know, when Trump got in the office, he said, 
make make um, uh, America great again. No, make Africans great again. Mm. We were great people at one time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they don't teach us that in school. They no. don't. Let me they tell you didn't teach us. When they I was in school, none of that. all I knew was Harriet Tubman. Yeah, that's about all it. All I knew in, in school was Martin Luther King, Malcolm X that they hated, and Harriet Tubman. I think with my mouth, I would have been a dead slave. My passion, I would have spoke up. They would have whipped me a lot. Hmm. No. They don't at all. And then they gave us Juneteenth. I'm not jumping for joy to that. Oh, all Juneteenth? our ancestors suffered and you give us one day and think I'm supposed to be happy about that? For 500 no, years, Juneteenth. You know? It angers me. But and, and I grew up thinking that black was so we were we were the worst things on earth until right. until I educated myself. When you turn the pages like years later, even around that time, they also had like the men being like devalued. Like they used to like rape the, the man in front of the woman. Yes, it's called buck breaking. Buck breaking, yeah. I heard about that a couple of years ago. I thought it was bullshit. I'm like, wow. No, yeah, no. It's called buck breaking when right. they actually took the strongest black man, yeah. the alpha male right. of the group, and basically made him um, an, uh, an an example so other slaves would not get out of hand. Right. You know, they would buck break him, rape him in front of his family, his wife, his children, his peers, right? Um, right. His counterparts. Rape him, abuse him, emasculate him, you mm -hmm. know, basically make him into a pet, you right. know, uh, beg for certain things, and then buck breaking, literally breaking this man down. What do you prefer, black or white? What's your, what's your preference? I mean, black of the berry, sweet of the juice. Like, you know the vibe. So why do you think about those basketball players when they go get the white girls and need the black sisters in the hood? It's a whole method behind that, you know, wow. I understand. It sounds crazy, but the white girl is not going to talk back to you and tell you something she don't want to do. So she's understanding? I wouldn't even say understanding. Probably easier to program versus a black girl or a okay. black woman, period, because it's like they worked for themselves at one point in their life to where they don't actually need a nigga. Okay. It's probably a benefit for them, but they don't really need to take nobody's shit, in all honesty. Most of the time, the dude don't want to deal with that. So well, okay, he goes so that's why he and, runs away? Excuse me? So, so he's like a runaway slave. He goes and runs away back to the, to the owner? I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you like this. Yeah. A woman going to do what she want to whoever she want. Okay. If you are really that dude, black, white, no matter what, yeah. They they're going to know how to play with you. Okay, now I've So now if you mm -hmm. know how to deal with people, it really shouldn't matter what type of girls you're dealing with if you're a real type of alpha male. Do you uh how do you say date out your race? I do not. Personally speaking, no. Why not? So my revolutionary act would be dating black, marrying black, having black babies, and supporting black businesses. That is how I contribute to the movement. Um, I, so for me personally, I do not date outside my race. I am not opposed to it. I do not look down upon it for other people who do it, but for right. myself and what it is that I stand for, it contradicts my, you know, my beliefs, I guess you would say. Right. Oh, can you see like a white woman with a black dude or vice versa how do you feel when you like walk on the street do you feel some type of way you be like oh he could have why he didn't want to mess with a sister for um my younger years yes i definitely did feel some type of way okay. but i understand now that outside projections and outside mm -hmm. like things that other people do have nothing to do with me and my views and values um, I would say previously I would feel some type of way like if I seen a white woman with a black man yeah um, I would feel some type of way in regards to there are so many beautiful healthy and like black women of substance who are seeking great black men right. and when I see them with white women um, it just makes me feel like we're missing out but that was my younger uh, you know opinion now I feel like they're missing out Right. They're missing out. Okay. And, they, and they they haven't yet grasped the concept concept and importance of why black people should be together. And not just black people, whatever your dynamic right. or your ethnic um, orientation is. I feel like, not saying that I'm against interracial dating, but the 
the way that it's I feel like there is the issue is where you overlook your own kind to seek out another that's my overall issue now if you end up just falling in love with someone because they're in your environment that's all you see you can't help you're human that's who you see that's who you're around right to so overlook your own to seek out another because you feel like something is wrong with your own that's a problem person you dated was what to be honest the last person i dated was white and that was my first experience okay how was that kind of difficult for me because um you know knowing where we come from and Knowing our ancestors were slaves and knowing my history, right? I, I, it was just an experience that um, was very different. Okay. And I thought it would be negative, but it, it actually really wasn't. When I think about LGBT, yeah. me personally, you know, um, my preference is women. Okay all my life okay and um i just feel like to be honest like it's about black queens first right you know um that throws the focus with me uh i had you know I, my preference should it shouldn't matter who okay. i sleep with so sometimes you know for me you know, i i commend the people that go and they fight for and march for gay rights and stuff right i i commend them for doing that but i'm more on a like a, a black level you know i okay. marched for trayvon martin and, okay um, you know uh george floyd i was out there protesting and stuff i can't handle a lot of things in one lifetime you know maybe in the next lifetime i'll do the lgbtq thing but for okay. right now just black did your mother and father have a problem with you being lgb my mother had a problem with it okay. i don't know my my dad he okay. left when i was uh two weeks old okay and um my mother she told me that he put fifteen hundred dollars on a bed and he just left and he Damn. never looked back okay so for me i grew up with a lot of issues okay a lot of, a lot of you know feeling unwanted mm -hmm. you know rejection right and i look for that through other people growing up to be honest what i'm going to say has nothing to see mm -hmm. with hatred right because in reality i have nothing against anybody Good. whatever you want to do with your body it is your i can take decision not to do certain things right this is me i have to protect my body now when it comes to spirituality when we observe in the world around us we can see clearly that no man can bear a child Right. That means spiritually, you are not designed to be with another man. God didn't make it like that. No. Say. Okay. Nature, no. Nature, no. you make a choice. Mm. Sometimes you look for excuses. Sometimes it could be poverty that caused you to do certain things like that. Uh, what about the, the girls, the black women that be uh, playing with the girls? Like, how, like they can't make no babies when you would, you know, like you said, like. How you feel about the women and women, especially the black women doing well, stuff? Well, it like goes that. for both. It okay. goes, what I'm saying goes for all without mm -hmm. stereotyping. Right. A man, woman. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Okay. It does mean a woman is not designed to be with a woman. It's like if you if you take in two iron and you hit the two iron, you rub in the two iron together. You know, not going anywhere. It's just going to get hot. Yeah. It's going to get hot only. But it's not, it's not think that you're going to be having, you know, as a as, as solution. First, you cannot, you cannot repocreate yourself. Right. You cannot have in the continuity of your body. You can only go uh, adopt a child. Right. But you cannot make your own child. Right. So which is a partially a form of sickness. So Phil. You ever heard of the uh, stereotype that uh, you're pretty for a black girl? You I'm ever thought about lie. it? I'm not even going to lie. I fell victim to that. I used to tell females that when I was younger, and that was because I was just young and dumb. Right. And it's like, TV and society puts a perception of what's beautiful on you. It's like a program. So do you like dark skin or, or light skin? Like them both. You like them no both? Difference. Okay. It's a person. <laughs> okay. Do you believe in marriage? 
I do believe in marriage. Yes. Are you married? I am not married yet. Okay, almost? Not almost, but I'm putting it out in the, in the, in the, in the universe. <laughs> okay. So when you look for a guy, mm -hmm. you're a black woman, you're a black queen, right? Yes, I am. Thank you. And um, what do a guy need? Does he need good credit? Does he need um, a nice job, a nice car? Mm -hmm. As well, a black woman's vision, what kind of mate would you like to have? Well, a woman of substance, when she's looking for a mate and, and the tangibles in a guy. So, one, I personally feel like it's good character. When you have good character, self-discipline, morals, values, principles, those other tangible things are going to automatically come in line. Okay. If you're a self-disciplined person, you go to the gym, you have great work ethic, right. that discipline is going to bear the fruits of the good job, of the good credit, of the house, the car. So for me, as a woman of substance, I look for good character, good judgment, morals, values, and principles in a man. And the, all everything else falls in place. Mm. I, think, I think marriage is, is, is something that, um, to be honest, it's, it's, it, it would be just a piece of paper if both are not putting in. Okay. It's about balance, man. Right. Compromise. Trust. Okay. So, you know, some so many people get married and um they get divorced as well. I know people in one lifetime that have been through three divorces. You think uh, marrying a black woman is good? Yeah. At first when I was younger, I probably didn't think like that, but me growing older and actually gaining sense and knowledge. Yeah. That's probably one of the most powerful couples you can have. A, a well-educated black man, a well-educated black female. Oh, okay. So, in all honesty, like, it's sad that marriage doesn't really exist in our community, but... It's, Why not? It should. That's what I was about to say. If, if it did, I, I feel like a lot more would come out of it. Did you come from a two-family home? Mother and father? My situation is actually different. Okay. Like, it's, 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 it's funny because... I come from a single family household, but right. my pops didn't leave us. I mean, right. he left us, but it was in another way. He passed away when I was two. Right. And then prior to that, he always stayed with the family. He was a hardworking man mm -hmm. from the story that I heard and I know. Like, right. They actually worked out. Have you ever heard of the slogan, you're pretty for a black girl? Absolutely. So do you think you're pretty for a black girl? And who told you that? Um, I'm 34, so I've heard it late teens. I've been natural for nine years. Uh, my daughter's natural. My son is natural. Uh, I am a very fair-skinned 34-year-old young woman. That do, you think, have, do you think it's racist? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have dark skinned sisters. I have six sisters. Have you ever heard you're pretty for a black girl? Yes. How do you I, feel not, about not, that? Not pretty for a black girl. I heard I'm pretty to be a dark skinned black girl. Ooh. How do you feel about that? I was out at a club. Um, we were dancing on a dance floor. Okay. And he's like, yo, for a dark skinned girl, yo, you got it. You got it for mm. a dark skinned girl. And I'm just like, I, I got it because I'm just an attractive woman. I'm just right. pretty. Not because I'm dark skinned. Not in Spite of me being dark skin, and I just that I just was so turn off. Back. Yeah, act like you didn't exist for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Have you ever heard you talk well for a black person? Yes, I've been told that I um, I talk white. Um, I or, or I speak. I'm very polite. Like I'm overly polite. You're okay. not used to a black woman being polite. I use my please and thank yous. <laughs> right. Um. So I've been I've I've heard of that as well. Yep. I was at a gas station and this woman was like, why you sound, why you so nice? You're not from around here, are you? Why, are you, why are you so polite? And I'm just like, am I not supposed to be polite? I guess you're supposed to be angry. I'm, I'm, I'm expected to be angry. I'm expected to have an attitude. But mm -hmm. why? I'm a black woman in society. So does one black woman destroy the rest for the rest that's an apple, I guess? No, it's not. It's the women who have not yet come who have not grown into their divine selves okay. who are walking around with the snap of the neck and the twisting of the lips and they talk like this and they behave like this and it sets a tone that this is how we are as the people and we are not. So yeah. do you think they dedicate themselves? They like, because they shipping? 
The ones who do it for a lifetime, yeah. So what about the stripper that's going to college and she's paying her... Uh... It's a hustle. Okay. She's not there for... She working with what she got. Would you date a stripper? A black stripper, especially. See, that's... Like, when you ask that question, you have to be real technical with me because I would date one. Would I trust one? No. Would I like one? No. Would I date one? Hell yes, because we are about to have the time of our fucking life. <laughs> right, we gonna have a lot of fun, but then outside of that, outside of the fun, it's like, could I really, really trust you? Like, mm. not to say all of them is so if, you, so if a black girl come to you, she'd be like, yo, I, you know, I do such and such. I dance at such and such club. I fucked with stripper. So fuck with her, because she kept it real and she hustled. Right. Okay. She helped me, I helped her. Okay. But now, there's ones that's doing it for the fun, and they're doing it for the lifestyle, and it's like, those I don't fuck with, because you're you just going to fuck up everything. You're going to fuck all the shit up. Mm. Can you strip yourself? No, I will never strip. That's not your thing. It doesn't matter who thing it is. I think that regardless on what your plan is, I don't judge anybody, first of all. Okay. Regardless on what your plan is, your uh -huh. plan is going to make sure you get your income. Your plan and whatever you set out for yourself, believing in your faith and your higher power, you're going to do it. Do we have a data stripper? Oh, uh, it depends on, it depends on her personality, to be honest. It okay. depends on her personality. And right. it depends on what she's doing it for. Like, if she wants to make it a lifetime commitment, then I don't think so, you know? All right. It's okay with the person, it's okay with me. If they're doing it in a healthy manner, um, and they like to dance, and it's honestly, stripping and pole dancing, right? I'll call it pole dancing. Right. Is that an actual sport? It's an athletic sport. Skill. Okay. You have to be strong. It is not easy to climb up that damn pole and tore your ass around and stick your legs out. That's <laughs> core strength, okay? Right. So for my fellow strippers and pole dancers out there, pole fitness, keep doing your thing. <laughs> I don't condemn them. I condemn society. Because you see the TV is not only TV. Mm. A man is victimized of two factors. It's what we call nurturing and nurturing. Okay. The nature is what you take from your back, your, your blood, then it, 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 uh, your nature. Right. So the, the, the nurture us, that's environment. Mm -hmm. And who condition all of this? Sometimes is what they call those big people who are in power. Maybe they haven't done enough for the black community. You see, right. to provide them. Imagine that you take uh, uh, seven black black boy, you put them in jail. You take seven black girl, you put them in jail. Then you take seven uh, uh, white fox, you put them in jail. When those white fox come out, you create a way for them to survive. But those black fox, you just expose them in the street. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect from them tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Then there will be a danger to society because you didn't do your work to prepare them also like to prepare So is, them it, is it the parents? Is the parents and society? It's, it's, society, it's society because the parents are victimized also. Oh. If you're not satisfied with yourself, you know, you're going to try to do things to change yourself. It's an inside job, okay. you know? Mm -hmm. I suffered from low self-esteem for many years, and I thought that outside stuff was going to make me whole, but it doesn't. Right. You know, it's more of a, and I'm not religious, but I'm highly spiritual. So, would you, you date know, a woman that would, that would have fake butts and fake breasts and things? No, I wouldn't. No? You like more natural? Natural, yes. Now, fake butts and fake breasts and all that stuff, uh, I'm on the fence about. I feel like... Are you natural? Or are you... I'm, am I natural? Yeah, yes, I'm natural. on that. Okay. I know a woman who purchased soap, bleach soap, mm. to change the skin. And then the skin started to peel, and doctor couldn't heal her. Then she developed melanoma and she died. The first thing to do in life is to love yourself. The way you are, if anybody doesn't like you, stay away from that person. You don't need that person in your life. And that's all you need to do. But when you come to have the gold, you will never be enough because you, when you didn't have it, you were not enough. I was born the way I was born. Right. I have to love myself first. 
And anything that comes to despise me, I have to look at it below. Could you ever see yourself getting like any surgeries? Do you think you need any? I'm a pre-surgical nurse, so I know what pressure does to people. And I'm not saying... Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? What do you think? I, honestly, I, 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 I have friends that are women that has work done. And I also have friends that their bodies are gold because of eating right and dietary. So you don't believe in surgeries? I don't believe in anything that you don't want to do to your own body. Mm -hmm. Choices, actions, right? repercussions. There's bad repercussions with that, you know that. Absolutely. Okay, how you feel about like twerking and like <laughs> things like that? How I feel about twerking, twerking. You're a dancer, right? Twerking is beautiful. Oh First of all, twerking okay. comes from Africa. It is right. a, it is an actual tradition. It's a ritual. To move is a ritual. Right. If you know anything about the, the chakras and okay. moving and relieving energy, twerking, gyrating, shaking of the hips, this is all this stems back to our our ancestry, our culture, our heritage. This right. is what we did. It's not to be overly sexualized, it's not to just gain the attraction of our um, counterparts, but right. it was a spiritual cleansing to move and to gyrate and to move of the hips very fast this is deep rooted into our our culture um so that's the twerking right but i still okay. like to twerk you know okay up, whatever right <laughs> but that is the the, the deep-seated root of twerking that is a motherfucking praise dance that's the same thing as the spanish woman belly dancing or west indian woman belly dancing or white women doing whatever they do it's a right. praise dance mm. I heard that hard shit. I like it. <laughs> That's so beautiful and just sensual and vulnerable and soft and we are just these magnificent creatures. I love being a black woman. So you love being a black woman? I love being a black woman. So black women are queens. Yes, we are. Yes. That's cool. So, um, have you ever heard like a guy call a, a black woman a bitch? Oh, yeah. Sorry to say the word. Whore, bitch, stuff like that. Yep. So when you see uh, us black men call our queens bitches and hoes and all those negative terms, how you feel about that? I feel sorry for them. Because if they only knew how powerful words were, right. um, a lot of people would not say the things that they say. Okay. You cannot take back what you put out. The tongue is so powerful. So calling this woman, this beautiful creature, creation of mankind, right. a, a, um, a negative slur of any kind, a whole bitch, slut, cunt, whatever people say, right. um, is just is so dehumanizing. It's degrading. It's devaluing. And I feel sorry for their lack of education behind what it is that they're saying. Right. But I don't associate myself with those type of people. So. <laughs> God bless. I heard that. Okay. Some of these cops are just scared for their life. They just get to the whole scene of the crime and it's... I'm scared I'm gonna pull this trigger and because I'm a cop I should be okay mm -hmm. like most police brutality some is abuse of power okay but I believe a lot of it now was just I'm scared and I don't know what to do do you trust, do you trust police not all some some not all some not all not honest. all bad because not all cops are bad now when that girl called the police right Nakaya she so she called and I Think she either went outside or maybe she was fighting and got to the phone to call and come back but i doubt that happened so i believe the girls were probably outside waiting for her she called and she went outside to defend her so you think he should have killed her no not at all because there's, there's proper pro protocol to like follow right like he and he, even if he sh even if he felt like he should have shot her he could have shot her with a taser boom or if not shot her with a taser he could have shot her on her leg i personally think he's not trained well you know why? That's what it was. He wasn't trained well. You know why? He, just, he was just scared. If it was a little white girl, you think he would have done it? Oh man. Right now, okay. Now, if it was if a bunch of white girls named Lillian and shit, 
They would have told Lillian to move along, move along, Lillian. And they would have broke up the fight. Makaya Bryant. You know about her? Yes. That's um, I saw the video. And I saw when she raised a knife. Right. And, and, and he shot her. And you know, the thing about it is it was wrong for her to be shot. But damn, you could have, you, you shot her with, with, you could kill her. Right. You could have shot her below, shot her in a leg or something, if you're going to do it, which is wrong. Mm. Why would you shoot her with, with the killer? A teenager at that. Now, with the killer. Now, maybe if it was a, maybe if she was a different race, maybe she would have done something different. I know that if it was a different race, it would have been something different. Because they still view us as animals, the cops. Right. So, I know if it was the cafeteria uh, ladies... And uh, cross, I'll say the crossing guards and the school safety, the one that deals with violence every day in public school, even in regular school, they would have handled the situation much better. They would have handled it. School safety much. and Catholic cafeteria ladies deal with knives and bats and spits. Without weapons. Fight without weapons. They take them kids down all the time. You, hear, they, you know, you never hear them killing a the cafeteria lady. Mm -hmm. Why is that? This, this has been going on since Emmett Till. Yeah. You want to get, go, go on to more. Eleanor Bumpers, she lived in Castle Hill. She was mentally ill. She picked up a knife, and they, the cops killed her, too. Mm -hmm. we, want, we, we can go back years of this police brutality. This thing has been going on for the longest. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's been going on. And it's going to continue to go on until we do something about it. Like they say, defund the police. Right. Take that money away from them. They up there living in the suburbs. They coming out here. They don't know how to deal with us. Right. And they don't even care to know how to deal with us. How do you think they should deal with us? Like I, should, How I think uh -huh. they should deal with us? I think they should treat us like they would treat their own. Like human beings. What about George Floyd? Horrible. Murdered on TV. That could have been your son, daughter, or nephew. I marched. I marched. Oh, you marched for it? It hurt. It hurt to see that man slaughtered. But it goes deeper than that. Remember mm. what they did to Rodney King on tape? Oh, yeah. Right on the video. Right there. They beat him to a bloody pulp. So this has been going on. Right. He just happened to survive it. And he survived, he lived, but he didn't re he, he was never the same after that. Mm -hmm. After Loima. Right. Look at the, the cop stuck the thing up his, come on, that's, that's a yeah. man. And you take his manhood like that, stick a plunger up his butt. Right. And that was here. Yeah, that was in New York. Come on, man. It's been going on. So they, so that, that cop got what, 22 years? Yeah, that's, that that, that kneeled, kneeled on his neck, so you think that was that, fair? That wasn't fair at all, man. He should have got 30, not even going to do that. No. Good behavior. He'd be out in, the, in, in, in what? So, what do you think? Like 15? No. Yeah, like 15. <laughs> so I heard his, his uh, George Floyd's daughter went on and went on the, the podium and was like, you know, telling the, telling the court how he, she missed her daddy or whatever. Or I think she sent a video or something like that. Yeah. The judge, I think, was probably racist. What human being hears a, a, a cry from a three, four-year-old child and don't give the, the suspect the, uh, how do you say, some more time? Voting is important because, A, you get to vote in the judges. People don't know that shit. I don't like voting, but let me tell you something. Judges get voted in. Trump has a lot of judges sitting, waiting to put a motherfucker in there. And you right. The George Floyd thing, right? Yes. The guy, the, the, the cop, he got 22 years. Yes. They, used to, I guess the, the, you know, his his daughter made a sent a video to the judge why you should condemn the guy, put him in jail. Everybody was speaking. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the judge give him the maximum thirty years? Because he said he's gonna come out fifteen because because you, because he's a white man. Mm -hmm. In his own video his case, too. Yes, I'm expl I, I, In that case, I am not contradicting myself. Okay. I am only showing you. You see how. We have racism in, in, in what we call uh, the, structure, the structure that's supposed to teach us mm -hmm. the right way. And they are the one leading us wrongly. Right. Because if, if this police officer who killed Floyd was a black man, they would probably hang him. Oh, yeah. That guy would have been, he probably would have been, uh, he probably would have got life. Yes, because I see this all the time right you see but the question is are all the judges all like that no no a judge may take responsibility to say no it was on video I am going to do this that way he was on his knee for eight minutes and 46 
43 yes, seconds. Yes, yes. And he looked at everybody and he had his knee there. Yes. Handcuff. Yes. Why did you even need to go to court for that? <laughs> Some things you can't go to court. So, now, can you imagine the court, the, the, the judge that gave that guy 22 years, 22 and a half years. Listen, mm -hmm. 22 and a half years. Can you imagine if there wasn't a video? Look, not only video. They could have said that the videos are corrupted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if your daughter ran into, ran into an issue with the police, how would you feel afterwards? Would you go get revenge or you go get a lawyer? What do you mean? If she died in yeah. the hands? Yeah, in the hands of the police. If she died in the hands of police, first of all, revenge ain't nothing but a, a dog's best meal. I don't need revenge. I need justice. Okay. I want people to answer my questions. I want someone to tell me why something happened to my child. If your son was to get stopped by the police in a couple of years from now, would you tell him to attack or run? I would tell him to listen to them, put his hands up, and do exactly what he said. Really? Yes. Because black men in society has no rule over police, no matter what state you are. NYPD. And it's been like that since the 60s, 50s, it's been 40s. Like, it's, been the, it's been that way for the end of times. 465 years of slavery. Right. We abolished it, but have we gotten over it? No. Absolutely not. So was, you think, so when he stepped on his knee, you think it changed the world or did it like? Eight minutes and 40 seconds. Is he more important than Martin Luther King? No. Why? As a person or as a community? Both. As a person, as a black woman that's standing here saying this, he's not as important as Martin Luther King because he was a black man that died and didn't get his word out. Mm-hmm. His only word was, I can't breathe. Right. On top of that, wasn't it a wasn't it Eric Gartner in right. 2014 telling police officers, get off my neck, I can't breathe? Right. So no, I don't think they're higher than any power. I think these are black African American kings just trying to be there for their families and stand up for what they believe in in their community. Well, thank you for coming to uh, the Unseen Queen. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. This is a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. And you want to, what's your social? My social is Tisha Monet, T I S H A M O N E E, on Instagram. My business page is Chemistry TV Network on IG. I own my own television network on Roku. Please stream it or go to www.chemistrytv dot com to stream all content for free or download on Roku. It's um we are about holistic and conscious conversations. So it's a network for the conscious, holistic and lit community. And so, lit yeah. community. And lit we still like to get I lit. like that. Yeah. The lit community. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah you can follow me on Instagram, the real David Allen. Facebook just David Allen. My name is c.s.miller on Facebook. My name is Blaze2400 on Instagram. But also follow my Scrub Life, Scrub Life NYC on Instagram as well. Thank you for having me and I appreciate you all and I'll see you back. I would like to, to send a, a salutation to a dear friend of mine living mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Yeah. She is a journalist and uh, if you ever have the chance to uh, to get yourself into WPWFM 89.3, that's every Saturday afternoon and it's between uh, 9 to 10 o'clock. Yeah. And he's a, he's a, he's a, a journalist from Haiti and mm -hmm. her name is Eugenia Charles. Okay. Yeah. You know that, so I want to send salutation to her. Okay. And I want to salute my city, that's Balance, Haiti, yeah. which I carry into my heart. Okay.